Welcome to training video number 11 for Matrix Games World in Flames. My name is Stephen Hokinson. This training video covers naval combat. We're going to do all three types of naval combat here, both surface, submarine, and naval air. To start, I'm going to go out to the North Atlantic Sea area. There are German units in section boxes 2 and 3, and there are Commonwealth units in section boxes 0 and 3. We're still in the naval movement phase, and when I do end of phase for naval movement, we'll progress to naval combat for the phasing side, which is abbreviated here as phasing combat. So I'll say end of phase, and now we see a form that shows all the possible combats. The North Sea, Faroes Gap, and North Atlantic. As you click on each one of these possibilities, the units that may participate in these combats are shown on the right-hand side. I want to start with the North Atlantic, where we have three German units, two submarines, and the Graf Spree. And we have a number of convoy points for the Commonwealth, 17 points. And we also have some light cruisers and one heavy cruiser. Right now we're just showing the damage, and none of these have participated in combats. So there's no damage. But if I click over here on show sea box sections. I now get the information underneath each unit that shows that this is in section 3, the other submarine and the Graf Spree are in sections 2, and the Commonwealth has their units in section 3 for the two cruisers on the left, and the other two cruisers and the convoys are in section box 0. I want to initiate combat for the Commonwealth in this sea area. To do that, I just click on this box, Initiate Combat. It brings up a form asking the Commonwealth player which of the four units that might initiate this combat is going to be used. Whichever one is selected becomes disorganized. So I'll just select the weakest one here, and I'll say OK. And now that unit has become selected. It's marked as disorganized on this form. And it also has a little indicator over here which says that it's initiating the combat. The question here is being posed to the German player, which is why the screen is gray, and the question is, do you want to commit your subs? And at this point, the German player says no. He would rather just have the Graf Spee engage in combat. So we'll say no to this screen. And now we need some search numbers, which I'll type in. And only the search by the Allied side was successful. This box is giving the Commonwealth player the opportunity to decide which units to include in the combat. That's because the Commonwealth player rolled better than the Axis player. The Commonwealth rolled a 1, low numbers are good. The Axis player rolled a 10, and it actually has an effective roll of 8 because of the Graf Spree. However, when the Commonwealth goes to choose which sections, there's only one unit that's participating. The submarines were uh, sitting this one out. And so there's nothing really to choose here. You just say, OK, done and now you get a form that enables you to spend some surprise points. The Commonwealth player has 10 points available, and the first choices are to avoid the combat or to choose what type of naval combat, whether it's submarine, air, or surface. The Commonwealth wants this to be a surface combat, and there's no need for them to spend surprise points to achieve that. The other buttons, which are disabled at this point, will become enabled as the progress through the naval combat sequence occurs. So we say OK to close this form, and we're back to the surprise point spending form again. This time, the Commonwealth player can increase its combat results and decrease the enemy's combat results. Right now, we're expecting the Axis to have one aborted ship, and we're expecting the Axis to have two aborted. So we'll increase the Commonwealth, we've gone up to one damaged. We'll spend another two points, which is what the two over here means, and the 8 is going to go down to 6, and we now have a damaged and two aborted. I'll do it one more time to get two damaged, and I'll do it yet again to get it down to one destroyed. I'll use the last two points that are available to decrease the enemy's effect on me, which is the enemy's effect on the two Commonwealth ships. And when I do that, it's no effect at all. So the results are going to be one destroyed for the Axis, and no effect on the Commonwealth.
If you change your mind, you can click on either of these buttons, undo the last or undo all of the ways that you've spent your surprise points. You also have over here the various charts for what the results will be. So we'll say OK to this, and here we are with the results. We have the graph 3, has one destroyed. There's no choice here since there's only one unit. If Germany had several units here, it would be able to choose which of the units would have to suffer this result. Now the destroyed does not necessarily mean that the unit is destroyed. It means that it might be destroyed. It's a damage risk. The defensive number in the upper right, the 7, which is also shown in the unit data panel as a defensive 7. If the German player rolls a die higher than 7, then the graph spree is not going to be destroyed. It's going to be one level of damage less. So instead of destroyed, it becomes damaged. If on the other hand, the die roll is 7 or less, then the graph spree is destroyed. So we click on destroy here, and for the die roll, I'm going to make it an 8, which is higher than the 7. And that's what you see over here. Defensive strength of 7, die roll of 8, the effect was damaged, and it's cumulative damaged. If there's another round, then the cumulative might get higher. So we say done here. And now we're over to the effect on the Commonwealth ships. And there was no effect. So there's nothing to do here other than just click OK. At this point, the Commonwealth is asked whether they want to continue this combat, whether they want to continue fighting, or whether they want to abort. In this case, we're going to say fight. And the same question is posed to the German player, and he also chooses to fight. This time, Germany, on the question of whether to commit subs, is going to say, yes, I want to commit my subs. I've skipped ahead a little here. What's happened is I had the Axis roll a 1 and the Allies roll a 10, the reverse of what had happened in the previous round. So now the Axis player is the one who has the surprise points and gets to choose what happens. So they're deciding whether to include the zero box units from the Commonwealth, the three box units, or all of them. You can just uncheck some of these boxes to see what the effect is. So if I uncheck the zero box, those are the Commonwealth units in the three box. If I do the reverse, include the zero and uncheck the three, I can see the units in the zero box. But in this case, I want to include all of the Commonwealth units. And I'll just say, OK, done. And here we are at the surprise points form again. You can avoid combat or choose the naval combat type. The German unit is going to be able to use his submarines at this point. So he doesn't need to spend points on choosing the naval combat type. And we'll just say OK. The first opportunity for choosing the combat is submarine combat. And the German player does want to do that. So he says yes here. And he wants to decrease the enemy naval combat. Yes, because look at the results for the Axis. Two damage and three aborted. So we'll spend two points to reduce that a little bit. And we reduce it down to just two aborted. Meanwhile, you'll notice that we have one destroyed for the Allied. If we reduce it again, we'll have no effect on the Axis units, and we'll have one destroyed on the Allied side. If we save our two points, we could use it to increase the amount of damage we do to the Allied units. But we're more concerned with not having any Axis losses. So we'll spend the last two surprise points to get no effect. There's one point remaining, but you can't buy anything with one point, so that's ignored. So here we are with the result of the attack on the submarines, no effect, and we just say fine. And here's that one destroyed result going to the Commonwealth units. Because this is a submarine combat, the Allied player is not going to be able to choose to have the damage inflicted upon any of his escorts. When I click on these units, none of the buttons down below are enabled. It is only when I click on a convoy which are what the submarines are attacking, do I actually see a unit's getting destroyed, that button being enabled. So I'll select the Netherlands convoy and click on destroy. And what happens is a destroyed result destroys two convoys. The Netherlands only had one. So I need to choose an additional convoy. And since we already have one point all by itself, I'll select that one. Now when I say OK, I've got the Netherlands unit destroyed, that's one convoy point, and another convoy point from the Commonwealth. There's still 15 convoy points out here with no effect, and of course the escorts are undamaged. That result is shown down here, 
and now we have a question of do you want to stay and I'll have both of the sides say that they want to fight I'll have the German player commit his subs but this time I'm going to have both of the search roles fail combat in the North Atlantic is now concluded for this combat phase the Graf Spee because it was damaged has to abort from the sea area so this is the naval combat abort queue there's only one unit in the queue right now and I'll move it over here it has a lot of little status indicators now it's shown that it's aborted, it's aborting, and it's damaged which is what all those little dots mean. I'll say OK done. Leaving the North Atlantic I'm going to have the Graf Spree head back towards Europe. I'd like to come into Brest and that's a legal destination however I have to pass through some Commonwealth ships. I can do that by doing a control left click on the Bay of Biscay. This gives the Commonwealth player the opportunity to intercept but the Commonwealth player doesn't really want to participate in a combat given that they has transports loaded with units sitting out here. So it's going to say, no, I do not want to intercept. And so now the Gaffsby can continue on and reach a destination of Brest. We've now concluded the naval combat abort digression, and we can terminate that move by clicking on the end of phase marker. We're back to choosing sea areas. The North Atlantic one is over and we can choose either North Sea or the Pharaoh's Gap. We're going to select the North Sea and show an example of a naval air combat. The Commonwealth player needs to select a unit to initiate the combat. I'm going to take one of the weakest ones here, this light cruiser. What's happened here is that we're now into the initiating side, the Commonwealth, bringing in some naval air support for this combat in the North Sea. I want to show you the subphases for naval combat there are a lot of them, 28 if I remember correctly. We've just selected a sea area and now we're bringing in naval air support. First the attacker, the Commonwealth, and then the defender, Germany. We'll have the commit subs, we'll do some search roles, the Walther subs abort is an optional rule having to do with Walther subs. We include sea boxes, which is what we did in the North Atlantic. We get the opportunity to include U.S. units when some of the U.S. entry options have been selected. None of that has occurred yet, so we're going to skip that subphase. We calculate surprise points, which is what we did the last time. We're going to choose the combat type, and in this case we're going to do an air-to-air -air combat. Kamikaze attacks are as an optional rule. If the bombers coming in on the ships survive the air-to-air -air combat, they're going to have defensive fire from anti-aircraft guns and if they survive that then there will be an attack on the naval units. The other side will fire their anti-aircraft guns and if their units survive the bombers will come in and attack the planes. These other subphases down here have to do with submarine combat and it also applies to surface combat. Once the results have all been resolved there's the abort or stay decisions made by first the attacker and then the defender if both sides stay, then we do another combat round, and we'll come back up to naval air support by the two sides. When we were in the North Atlantic, there were no nearby land hexes with air units, so we skipped those two subphases. But here, fighting in the North Sea, there are going to be both Commonwealth and German air units capable of participating in the combat. We start with the selectable units form over on the left. These are all the units that the Commonwealth can fly into the North Sea in order to participate in the combat. However, all of these units have short ranges. The fighters are a range of three, and even the other units have fairly limited capabilities. The Wildebeest is one exception, but we already have a lot of units out here capable of fighting in the naval air combat. So we're going to leave the Wildebeest on the side, maybe use it for something else. I'm just going to end this subphase. And now we see the units that the German player can bring in. But again, all of these have very short ranges. The longest one is five. And if they come into the combat, they're only going to be able to make it to the zero or one box. So they're not really going to help very much. So again, I'm just going to end this subphase. For the search numbers, I'm going to use five for the axis and I'm going to use 9 for the Allied side. Only the Allied side was successful. The Commonwealth had units in the Section 3 and Section 4 boxes. However, because the die roll was a 5, only the 
unit in the Section 4 box is capable of participating in the combat. All those good units in the Section 3 box have to sit this one out. However, the Beaufort here does get to choose which one of the enemy units it's going to attack. And there are five ships sitting out here. Un by unchecking Section Box 3, we reduce the German units to participating in this combat to just the five naval units. The Commonwealth has five surprise points to spend, and it's not going to use them to avoid the combat or choose a, the type of naval combat. Do you want a naval air combat? This question is posed to the Commonwealth. They say yes. And we get a pop-up box which tells us that there's not going to be any air-to-air -air combat because there are no fighters engaged. The Commonwealth has five surprise points capable of being spent. They could use it to decrease the anti-aircraft fire. Anti-aircraft fire right now is going to be nine points of AA, which would result in one die out of six. It'll be the lowest of the six die rolls. That's not going to be too dangerous for this naval air unit, so we're not going to spend our surprise points here. Instead, we're going to save them for when we attack the German ships. And after completing all six die rolls, the lowest die roll was a one, so there's one damage point to be assigned. We click on the air unit, and the buttons down here at the bottom say that we can reduce its bombs. It currently has three naval air points coming in. We reduce the bombs and we get a one point reduction. That spends the AA point that was applied and we're down to none left so we can say OK. There are no Axis bombers so we don't have to worry about that. And now we get to increase our naval combat which is how we want to spend these five points will spend two points to increase the amount of damage done to the axis, which becomes one damaged and three aborted. We're saving the other three points to be used down here to select a target. In naval air combat, the attacking side, in this case the Commonwealth, chooses the first target, the third target, the fifth target, and the seventh target. The German player gets to choose the even targets, two, four, six, and so on. By selecting a target, the Commonwealth is going to be able to choose the second target, which would normally be chosen by the German player. So by selecting the second target, the Commonwealth player is going to be able to choose the first, second, and third targets within this combat. So here's the Commonwealth choosing what the target is, and we're going to attack the Bismarck. Now the Bismarck has a two defense, so it's going to be hard to damage. So that even rolling a three, doesn't have any effect on the Bismarck in terms of damaging it. We're back here to choose another target and we do want to spend the surprise points to do that. We've got the Bismarck aborted. That was after the first combat result. We've got three more aborts to try and we need to choose which one. We'll take the Sch Scharnhorst and that was also aborted. It has a defensive strength of three but because we rolled a two it ends up fully aborted and we're going to take the best of the remaining ships, which is the heavy cruiser, and try to abort that. We succeed with a die roll of five, and now the German player has to choose one of his remaining ships to be aborted. And in this case, with a die roll of nine, it's only half aborted. Half aborted means that it does not become aborted unless it experiences a second half abort result. There are no more abort results to be applied here. So we have what the results of this will be, is that three of the German ships will be aborted, the other one's going to get to stay, and of course the Leipzig, which had no effect at all upon it, is also going to be able to stay. Because there are no Axis bombers, there's no effect on the Allied units. I'm going to have both sides continue to fight in this combat, though the German player would normally abandon this combat since three of his best ships have already aborted. I'm going to skip through the air support phases for both sides and this time I'll have bad die rolls for the Allied side and very good die rolls for the Axis side. And the Axis player is going to exclude the Section 4 units so that it's just the surface ships that are going to be engaged in this combat. Of course some of the surface ships are carriers so the carrier air units are going to participate. We don't have to spend our points on choosing the naval combat table because the first choice is always going to be naval air and because the German player has a naval air unit, they can do that. The Commonwealth player would just as soon not engage in this combat at the point, so we'll say no to this. But regrettably, Germans are going to be able to say, yes, we want to do a naval air combat. And that brings up the question of which of the 
Commonwealth carrier air units are going to fly as fighters and which are going to fly as bombers. All four of these units are swordfish. Three of them have pretty good air to sea combat factors, three, three, and three. The other one has a two, which is not all that shabby, but we should have at least some fighter out here trying to protect our ships. So we're going to have the first one, which has an air to air of two as a fighter, and we're going to have the higher ones over here as bombers. And you'll notice that when I click as a bomber, the range number goes to a gray to indicate that it's a bomber. And you also have over on the right the notation that it's flying as a bomber. And I'll take the last one as a bomber. Now that all four of them have an assignment, I can close this form. We are now back at spending surprise points. Germany has 10 to spend, and at this point they could change the air-to-air -air combat values. However, looking over at the expected losses of one destroyed, one damaged, and two aborted, Germany would much rather save those surprise points in order to be able to lower the risk to its naval. In the air-to-air -air combat, there are just two air units involved. There's the Commonwealth Swordfish flying as a fighter versus the German naval air unit. In the first round, the Axis rolled a 14, which is the defender chooses which unit to abort. There's only one unit to abort, so the Commonwealth aborts its swordfish. The swordfish needs to land on a carrier. As long as it doesn't choose the class 3 carrier, all will be well. The second die roll for the air-to-air -air combat by the allied player is a 10, which is the defender clears through a bomber. There's only one to choose, so the HE-115C is cleared through. You can see at the bottom that the other Commonwealth bombers were cleared through immediately because there were no German fighters. No air units capable of fighting remain, and so the air-to-air -air combat is over. Because Germany still has its 10 surprise points, it can use them for increasing its anti-aircraft fire. We'll spend two of the points to do that, changing the die roll from the lowest one of five to the lowest one of four. Of the four die rolls, one of them was a one, so the air to sea factors that the Commonwealth is applying to the German ships is reduced by one. Selecting this unit, clicking on reduce bombs, we get a one point reduction. And once again, we'll spend two points reducing the anti-aircraft fire. Instead of one of two, it'll be the lowest one of three. Regrettably, the die rolls were seven and ten, so the bomber becomes aborted. Germany will just take the bomber and place it back in a coastal hex. That ends the return to base digression, and this is where Germany has been saving six surprise points. It doesn't want to have one destroyed, one damaged, and two aborted. So we decrease the enemy's naval combat, it's one destroyed and two aborted. We do it again. It's two damaged and three aborted. And the last time we get it down to one damaged and three aborting. The Commonwealth player gets to choose the first target and they'll choose the Leipzig. Click on damaging it and a die roll of seven means that yes it does get damaged. Germany will choose the Leipzig for the abort result. Because it's already damaged it's going to abort anyway. By choosing abort for the damaged ship the abort result has very little effect. In fact, it's only half aborted. The Commonwealth wants to get rid of the other, and on a die roll of one, sure enough, the Nornberg is aborted. There's only one ship left that can take this other abort, and that's going to be the Leipzig, and it is fully aborted. There are no Axis bombers remaining because the one was aborted during the anti-aircraft fire. So now we just have the three carrier air units to return to the carriers. By clicking on any of these, the form is going to come up and let me return all three of these to base. Seeing all the air units that have to return to the carriers is important because it lets you make sure that each one of them has a carrier to return to. Starting with the carrier air unit of class 3, we can only put it on one carrier, the carrier Arc Royal, which is also class 3. Likewise, the class 2 swordfish has to go on the illustrious, and that's because the other class 2 carrier already has a carrier air unit aboard. And then we're left with just the Class 1 carrier air unit, and it can fit on the Furious because right now there's only one Class 1 carrier air unit aboard. The Axis side does not have any units left to continue the naval combat, so therefore the naval combat is over in the North Sea. The last step of this naval combat is to take the aborted units and return them to base. There are five German ships that have been aborted. The first three have Q numbers of one. That's because they were aborted in the first round. The other two have Q numbers of two 
because they were aborted in the second round. I'm going to take all three of these German units, which are in Q1, move them over here, and return them to base. I'll end that naval combat abort regression, which brings us right back to the form again to abort the last two units. They also go into keel to keep their brethren company. That ends the naval combat abort digression, and we are back to choosing sea areas. There's one sea area in which the Commonwealth could still initiate combat in the Pharaoh's Gap, but there's no real reason for the Commonwealth to risk 17 convoy points against submarines. So at this point, we'll just terminate the naval air combat phase, and at the same time, we'll terminate this video on naval combat. We've covered surface, submarine, and naval air combat.